You're going to pretend you're Vinny for science. Hey, it's for science. <laughs> it's for science. I'll be Vinny for science <laughs> just this once. Welcome to Media Minute. I'm Michael Forward. And I'm Jesse Sanford. We're going to bring you your entertainment headlines in quick time. Jesse, what's new? Well, YouTube continues to exist even though it exploits the little man. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm here to say I have no other option. Yeah. So you know what? Let's talk about some channels. Sure. That I personally enjoy. Um, and you know what? Today I'm going to give them a rating out of five. Okay. Yeah. I, I think ratings are mostly useless outside of yes or no. But we're going to do it anyway. We're going to do it anyway. Because that's how we roll. Heck yeah. We got Carl Jobs on top. He does speedrun documentaries. Okay. You know, the speedrunning community has such a rich history that the, we've been seeing a lot of these style of YouTube pop up recently. And thank goodness, because it is so interesting. You, like, you got to go watch his documentary on the Doom series and the leader of speedrunning there. Yeah. it It's incredible. Um, and once you're done that, you should go check out a Mario 64 speedrun documentary. It's a lot of glitch exploitation. Yeah, it's amazing, like, the stuff that people find and, like... I I don't even know how they find it in the first place. It's it's so right. You know why would you do anything that 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 makes that glitch run? But and he goes over it. Yeah. He explains the history of these glitches and he puts it into context of the times. And uh, yeah, really interesting stuff. Um, John Tron. Have you heard of that guy? I know of John Tron. You haven't seen John Tron yet. No, no. I know he was uh, pre-Danny for Game Grumps. That's true. Yeah. Um, you, speaking of, you should go check out Game Oh, yeah. Before we get too far ahead, Carl Jobs, four out of five. Okay. That's yeah. that's a strong rating. Yeah. It's, it's like a seven out of ten on Metacritic. Yeah. So. It's an eat your Wheaties rating. <laughs> yeah. John Tron, he's got a bird. Yeah. And the bird talks. It's like a mechanical bird, but believe it or not, that's not the entirety of John Tron. He actually reviews movies. Okay. And he does silly skits. And like you, like you said, he knows Aaron Hansen. Yep. You know, um, his channel in general, I've got to give that one a five out of five. Nice. If you haven't seen him yet, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> so moving on, I bet you you've heard of film theory. Yes. I bet you you've heard of game theory. I have. But have you heard of food theory? No. Well, now you have. It's Matt Pat's new YouTube. Okay. You get to learn about why coffee ushered in the technological revolution, and you get to understand exactly which size of fries you should be buying at every fast food location. Those are very important topics. They are, especially if you want to know whether or not Fruity Loops and Apple Jacks are the same thing. Ooh, there's, there's the question. One for the ages. And if I had to give this channel a rating out of five, I'd give it a four. Okay. It's, you know, it's, he's just starting it. It's not even a year old yet. Come on. Have you heard of Styro Pyro? No, I haven't. Oh man, this guy is wild. He breeds moths and shoots laser beams. At the moths? Do the, <laughs> does he breed laser beam shooting moths? Yeah. He's a mad scientist. <laughs> he hasn't put it on video yet, but we all know. We know. Yeah, he's got like, in, like pulse laser beam systems using like big ruby uh, chunks of ruby. Um, he he's he's so uncomfortably um, terrifying, but it's really fun. Like he's got this laser bazooka that he made, and not he he didn't he doesn't just make these things. He documents how how to make them. So. Next week, you're going to have a laser attached to a moth. No, luckily, he saying. actually explains the the dangers of lasers. Okay. And you so, can learn about exactly how quickly you'll fry your retinas if you buy an eBay laser. Yeah. So, so you don't want, like, stranger danger laser phasers. No right? stranger danger laser phasers. Yeah. Attached to moths. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Although, if you think about it, if you put a laser on a moth, do you think it's just going to follow the light source? I don't know. That'd be, like, 
perpetual mothness. For the perpetual mothness, I give Styro Pyro four out of five. You can't. He doesn't relate to everybody, so you can't get five stars. Yeah. Have you ever wanted to be a wonderful hum a wonderful person? I, I, I thought I was. You are. You are. <laughs> but you can be reminded about just how wonderful you are every single day when you watch Anton Petov's What the Math. Okay. Yeah, he reports on uh, science news, mostly astrophysics. Cool. If he's talking about a subject, you got to know that there's something serious. <clears throat> Have you watched the, uh, speaking of space and yep. stuff, have you watched the Dragon Capsule launches? Oh, I haven't. Yeah. We're really close to getting universal internet yep. around the globe. Yeah, that will be something. Yeah, it's going to be really nice to watch YouTube in the bush. Yeah. Where Anywhere. else would you watch, watch it? Uh, you know, sometimes I watch it while I'm showering. And other times I'm on the road, you know, just driving. It's a good time. For, it's not a good time. No, don't, don't YouTube, YouTube on the road. Ever. Yeah. Ever. That's why you get YouTube premium. So you can just listen. There you go. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So have you heard that there might be, sp uh, there might be space on Venus. No, there might, what? there might be life on Venus. Uh, yeah. I think I've heard some rumblings on it. Yeah. Uh, Anton actually talks about it and he talks about why it might actually be plausible and he sources his information from the latest papers That's available. Good. He doesn't just make stuff up like I do. No. Oh, <laughs> he doesn't make stuff up ever. Okay. Except for when he calls me a wonderful person. But do you know why some animals keep turning into crabs? <laughs> I've actually seen this video. Yeah. It's one of the, the wonders of the ages, but uh, <gasps> yeah, there's a, there's a whole top, like, Animals keep turning into crabs. They do. Yeah. They do. And because of that, I got to give what the math five crabs out of five. There you go. And that's all I've got for YouTube and video news. All right. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Media Minute. I'm Jesse Sanford. And I'm Michael Forward. And Mike's going to talk to us a little bit about video games. All right. It's time to get our Zelda on with Hyrule Warriors. Let's start that again. It's time to get our Zelda on with Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity for the Nintendo Switch coming out from Omega Force. And uh, it's set in Hyrule 100 years before the latest Zelda game, Breath of the Wild. You get to experience the events of the Great Calamity. It's basically, uh, have you heard anything about the Hyrule Warriors series? I haven't. Have you ever played any of the Dynasty Warriors games? Now that's something I've played. So yes, uh, Hyrule Warriors is basically Dynasty Warriors, except in the Zelda universe. Okay. So uh, yeah, you get to uh, be a hero on a large battlefield, and you get to play like all sorts of uh, characters from the Zelda universe, and uh, you got a whole bunch of systems and Easter eggs that come from Breath of the Wild. So like you still feel like that you're in that Breath of the Wild universe, but you know, you get those large battlefields and this one's doing pretty good. 79 on Metacritic. Wow. I, I've i never in my life thought I'd get to play a Dynasty Warriors style Legend of Zelda. That's actually the second one that they've done. How far out of the loop am I? Um, I don't know. On a scale of moths to lasers, I'd say you're on a roller skate. Okay, next up, World of Warcraft. It's still a thing. People still play it. They released a new expansion. Really? Yeah. 
Uh, Azeroth's staunchest defenders have been dragged into an all-consuming darkness. You can get get to investigate a conspiracy to unmake the cosmos. Un There's a new player hub, new features, a new level cap, uh, infinite dungeons. Basically, if you play World of Warcraft, it, it's for you. There's no rating for it, but uh, yeah, if you're still playing World of Warcraft, then... Uh, Play you know, Shadowlands. That really begs the question. I wonder what the value of a Warcraft subscription from Vanilla WoW till now, plus the full price of the game, plus every single expansion up until today would be. You're into the thousands of dollars for sure. Yeah. And that's why people, pro I, I imagine that's why people are still playing. Yeah. Because they're addicted, first of all. I guess that's counterintuitive to my point, but also because it's one heck of an investment. Yep. It's uh, it's crazy that it's been around this long, but like I still remember the old ads where they had Mr. T yeah. doing a cameo, and uh, of course they did that uh, uh, South Park episode. That's been like 15 years since they've done the World of Warcraft South Park episode, so it's been on the go for a while. Wow. Yeah, I'll never forget. Um, come on, what's his name? You know, the guy with the toque? The guy with the two. You know, he's he's really vulgar on South Park. Oh, um, Cartman. Cartman, yeah. I'll never forget Cartman's mom um, coming into his room while he's playing World of Warcraft with the steel pan. Yeah. <laughs> that brings me back. Uh, coming up next, uh, it's been released already for the PS5 and PC. It's Godfall. It's a looter slasher melee rpg basically they've uh, taken the kind of sword play of dark souls and they've added the loot system from borderlands and just basically combined it all together it's uh doing 62 on metacritic the response is it's an okay game it's one of those ones that's okay but like people don't really grab onto it They're, it's lacking that that thing that i think that makes a game a classic Okay, so there's just like so, like something missing from this. It seems like that's what the reviews seem to say, and no one can really put their finger on it. Like what what's lacking? Well, maybe you know after so many successful loot driven games, you know the Borderlands series, maybe it's just really hard to fill those shoes. It could be. It could be. And uh, I mean, loot based games generally you feel kind of powerful, like going through. And upgrading, but if it's got that Dark Souls gameplay where, you know, you can get smacked down really easily, maybe it's not a good mix. I have to agree. Be that that's what's missing. You know what's missing from our lives as well? What? David Duchovny. Oh yeah. Uh it's actually a really release game. Uh 13 for the Xbox One, PC, and PS4. It's a remake of the 2003 first person shooter where you have a very bored sounding David Duchovny doing the uh, voiceover for the main character. I'm, I'm serious. Like he sounds like <laughs> he needs a cup of coffee. You play as uh, 13, a man without an identity in a cell shaded experience and uh, 35 on the meta score. A lot of people not digging this remake. Apparently the way it was done was kind of really lazy like instead of remaking the cutscenes they for the first cutscene they have a guy come into a room and watch a smaller screen in the original resolution the way they did it has been very weird yeah if you're gonna do a remake just be prepared to put effort in i understand that the main voice actor was bored but that doesn't mean you should be bored during the full production no wonder you're getting 30 on Medi Metacritic. Come on. <laughs> Come on, get your stuff together. Yeah. Don't ever do that again. No, it's funny. Like uh, a lot of the recent like remakes that we've been seeing have been scoring fairly well. Great. Right? They've been doing well. Uh, yeah. Why would you drop the ball on something I would have played? I would have played this. Yep. Well, to end things off, this one's, it's weird. It's, it's weird. I'm, I'm going to say that. It's called Five Dates. It's for the PS4, PC, Switch, and Xbox One. Okay. Now, I'm going to take you back to the 1990s where everything was a multimedia experience. Oh, right. And they had, they used to do this thing called full motion video where 
they would make a game and film like live actors in front of a green screen. And yeah. then they would import those actors into like a very small screen into the game. Yeah. They were usually very, very poorly acted uh, with poor video and audio quality. Well, they brought back FMV, except of course, everything's higher quality now. Okay. So uh, yeah, it's a game with FMV live actors. You take on the role of Vinny, a millennial from London. And you get to lead Vinny through video dates with five different women in what is described as a rom-com experience. And it's a lockdown game. They, they, they've centered the idea of the game around lockdown. That's why he's doing these video dates by uh, video. This is so creative. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's a lockdown game in lockdown. And apparently, like, the actors that they got and the actresses uh, are apparently, you know, named people uh, in Britain anyway. So at least you don't have that cheesy 1990s experience where yeah. people are delivering their lines like this. And uh, yeah, it, it's doing a lot better than 13. It's doing uh, 78 on Metacritic. Wait, you said 13, not 30? 13 is the game. Oh, okay. That's, that's well, the David Duchovny game. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Y y and you know, come to think of it, you know that... It that experience would be really interesting on virtual reality. Do you imagine that kind of experience like that? Yeah. 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 Wow. That is so creative. Is it on Steam? A, yes. I believe it's on Steam. Yeah. It's a PC game. I don't know. I know what I'm doing this weekend. You're, you're going on five virtual dates. I'm going on five you're virtual dates, Lexi. You're going on, you're going to pretend you're Vinny for science. Hey, it's for science. <laughs> it's for science. I'll be Vinny for science just this once. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that ends off uh, this episode of uh, Media Minute. Hopefully you enjoyed the show. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Ring that bell for notifications. I'm Michael Forward. And I'm Jesse Sanford. Have a great day.